students, counselors, families, we're waiting just a few seconds as everyone joins the room. Thank you for your patience. Well, good morning or good afternoon or good evening, wherever it is in the world you are joining us. Thank you so much for joining StriveScan and Cache's virtual college exploration program. This Cache program is a college admissions collaborative highlighting engineering and technology. These are STEM focused programs this week. A few housekeeping items before we begin. First and foremost, you're encouraged to ask questions throughout the session via the Q&A button that you see on your screen. When you submit a question, it gets sent to all of our panelists and they'll work to answer the question during the session and at the conclusion of the session. They may not get to every question. This is just to 45 minute sessions. So just be aware of that as you're going through today. As a reminder, your camera and your microphone are turned off. The panelists cannot see or hear you. So if you do have questions, you should type them in through the Q&A button. This is one of 50 panel presentations and individual information sessions that we are running through this evening. So we encourage you to go to strivescan.com slash virtual slash STEM and check out those programs. And when you sign up for today, you received a barcode. You do not need that barcode for this virtual program. We are recording this session and all of the sessions. The recording will be made available at strivescan.com slash virtual slash STEM later today. So please check that out. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to our panelists. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much, Zach. And thank you to Strivescan for hosting this session today. Um, my name is Samantha Goldfarb. Uh, I want to welcome you to Columbia University's information session. Uh, Undergraduate Admissions is so happy to share this virtual presentation with you all during StriveScan's Virtual College Week. We hope you all are taking care of yourselves and each other during this unprecedented time and appreciate you taking the time to learn more about Columbia today. We're excited to begin this virtual information session. As I said, my name is Samantha Goldfarb and I'm an assistant director in uh, undergraduate admissions today. Uh, my plan is to share an overview with you about the experience and opportunities available at Columbia, as well as some information about um, how our selection process moves forward, as well as our dedication to affordability for our students. I'm joined by several colleagues who will be responding to questions submitted in the Q&A function. Um, uh, they'll be responding to these questions throughout our time together, but I'll also be reserving a portion of our time at the end to answer some of your most frequently asked questions live. Um, I would like to remind you that this session is being recorded by StriveScan, as Zach said, um, so we do ask uh, for you to refrain from any additional recording of this session um, and want to remind you that the session is for private use only. Now let's dive in to learn more about what makes Columbia a unique place to explore STEM. So I want to first ground us all with an understanding of the Columbia community more broadly. Um, Columbia has two specific undergraduate schools, Columbia College, which is our arts and science school, as well as the Fu Foundation School of Engineering and Applied Science. We do have 6,000 students studying across those two schools, about 4,500 students in Columbia College and 1,500 students studying in our engineering departments. Now, these two undergraduate schools are also part of a broader intellectual community that includes over a dozen of the world's greatest professional and graduate schools in the world. So students as undergraduates have access to events, courses, and research opportunities through uh, medical school, law, um, journalism, dentistry, uh, several others. I won't list them all for use of time, um, but to emphasize that not only is there a medium-sized undergraduate community for students to connect with, um, but also the benefits of being part of a large research university. Columbia's campus itself is located in Morningside Heights, a neighborhood in the upper west side of Manhattan, um, just northwest of Central Park. So we are in New York City, but we do have a true traditional residential campus, which you see featured here. Our students are guaranteed housing for all four years, and 95% of our students do live in our residence halls for all four years. And for us, this gives us a unique opportunity to create community, build connections with students, and have a fit up physical space for students to call their own during their time on campus. 
we're very proud to offer a wide breadth of programs across the two undergraduate schools with more than 100 departments for students to choose from in their areas of study. This means that students can explore, can mix and match, um, can take classes across different departments. Um, we want students to have a rounded education in our traditional undergraduate space. Another piece I want to emphasize, and, and we have some statistics on the slides here, um, but to note that these 6,000 students are very much um, representative of the different life experiences, different backgrounds that make up not just the country, but the world. Um, we think about diversity broadly and intentionally to consider identity, to consider college access, um, to consider socioeconomic status, we have all 50 states represented in our undergraduate community, as well as more than 90 countries. A dozen of the world's religions are practiced on campus. Um, and this very much contributes to the ways that students are actively learning from one another, both in and outside of the classroom. But this diversity is also supported, um, whether that's through academic advising, where students have an academic advisor for all four years who guides students through their um, through their programs of study, through their registration, um, but stay with them through graduation. But also offices like our Office of Multicultural Affairs, who thinks critically about different communities based on identity, and not only how to connect students with peers with similar backgrounds, but how to create connections across. Um, and there are also different areas of support for all of our students to make sure that they're healthy and happy and to use the word again, supported during their time. So offices like Counseling and Psychological Services and Office of Disability Services are here to support students through various challenges and um, through their needs to make sure that this community is healthy and connected. Now, I do want to sp speak about what makes Columbia's academic experience unique from other institutions, whether a student is in our engineering school or in Columbia College, and that's specifically to share about our core curriculum. If you've explored Columbia at all before this, you may already be familiar with this 100 year old academic tradition. Um, but I do want to spend some time here because as students interested in STEM, Studying at Columbia offers a unique opportunity to engage in our structured approach to the liberal, liberal arts. Apologies. All Columbia students take part in this set of classes, which is essentially graduation requirements, but is so much more than that. We have designed a specific curriculum unique to our campus where students are exploring the same texts, authors, and ideas across philosophy, literature, Western art, music, and then are moving beyond the Western canon to think critically about other cultures, about um, the ways technology and quantitative reasoning support learning. Um, and also think about wellness and, and health. And so for you STEM students, you might be interested, you might be looking for a more specific and focused STEM experience. But for those of you that might still want to read Plato, still want to study a language other than English that's not computer programming or computer programming, if you'd like, we have that too. Um, that want to debate with peers and be part of this shared campus tradition, uh, this can be a great way to essentially get the best of both worlds and have um, robust research opportunities that we'll talk about in a little, a few slides, um, while having this classical education. This is about a third of our graduation requirements for our students, so there's still plenty of time to take majors, to explore, to take minors if you'd like, um, or to have plenty of time for electives. But what makes this so unique is that these are discussion based classes 22 students or less where students are reading the same text as all of their peers. So I'll say it differently. Um, our first year requirement is a course called literature humanities where in groups of 22 students or less all of our first year students are discussing the same pillars of Western literature in the same order. So every student on Columbia's campus starts with a copy of the Iliad. They're reading it, they're asking about why it's relevant, and then they're moving week by week through the pillars of Western literature all the way through Virginia Woolf's To the Lighthouse and Toni Morrison's The Bluest Eye. So students spend a year discussing these texts, which is a great book style course that isn't 
different per se, but what makes it different is that you have this in common with all of your peers and taking it a step further. This is an experience you share with every single student on campus. And as it is 100 year old, years old as of last year, um, this is an experience that you share in some form or another with the more than 300,000 alumni um, that are part of our community. So it's a really powerful intellectual tradition that encourages students to think, communicate, ask questions, and have a broad-based education alongside their more specific major programs of study. Now, I do wanna move into a little bit more about engineering and research uh, as that's the interest for so many of you. Um, at Columbia, we really do think about the way that the academic and intellectual work of our students and faculty engage with the world around us. In fact, Dean Mary Boyce, um, Dean of the Fu Foundation School of Engineering and Applied Science, has essentially rebranded or at least found ways to more accurately and succinctly articulate the values of our engineering school with the phrase engineering for humanity. She very much believes and sees the ways that our engineers solve world problems, are building connections across disciplines, that engineering is certainly not in a vacuum and can make the world better. Um, can make connections, can increase security, can be creative, can make us healthier, um, and can make the world more sustainable. And that's possible because of collaboration across departments. Now this sentiment though articulated by Columbia Engineering is not unique to Columbia Engineering. That's certainly true across the board at Columbia, where we want students to engage in research early and often, both in the sciences and engineering and beyond, and students have access to research as early as their first year. We have tons of um, opportunities to not only engage on campus with research, but I mentioned have access to our medical school campus, which is about a 10 minute ride north of our main campus in Morningside Heights. Um, but we also have other facilities for students to tinker right on campus, including our newly designed or redesigned maker space that's available 24 hours a day um, for students to build their own projects and expand within their own interests as well. Something that makes Columbia's education not necessarily unique, but is something I wanna make sure that I emphasize is our faculty. We have giants in their fields, Nobel Prize winners, um, presidents of academies of arts and sciences who are engaging in the highest levels of academic work but come to Columbia because they value teaching undergraduates. More than half of our faculty actually live in the Morningside Heights neighborhood and are part of our residential community and all of the courses that go towards a student's major are taught by full professors. So you're going to be engaging with giants like Farrah Griffin featured in the upper left, who's a, a dignitary and leader in African American literature or engineers. You might be studying under Gordana Vonyak Novakovich, who's actually engineering human tissue in the upper right, um, or for some of our mechanical engineers who might be in the room, you might take the introduction to human space flight with our resident astronaut and Columbia engineering alumnus, Michael Massimino, who, as you might guess, is the gentleman featured in the space suit. But these folks really teach at Columbia because they want to engage with undergraduates. So it's not just the lectures. All of our faculty have um, office hours or student walk-in hours for folks to come in, ask questions and clarify coursework material or get advice about how to engage more deeply, how to get started with research, um, taking their learning to a more personal level. And it's not uncommon, and we hear this from our current students often, um, to have your faculty or your professor from your introductory course invite your class over for um, one of my favorites was in the physics department to watch Battlestar Galactica with pizza and talk about the accuracies or inaccuracies of the space flight as depicted. So you wouldn't necessarily expect to have this level of connection and access to faculty at a place like Columbia with so many students and so much research, but that truly is a hallmark of the undergraduate experience for students at Columbia. 
I do want to make sure we also talk about how students are engaging and exploring professionally. So um, it is not just what is exclusively happening on campus that gives students the opportunity to develop, but students absolutely benefit from our location in New York City. We have our Center for Career Education that is a spectacular resource for our students in Columbia Engineering and Columbia College to explore the professional opportunities that are available really only in New York because of its place as the center for culture and data and technology and commerce. So students can tap into this resource early on um, in their time and throughout their uh, experience as an undergraduate, but also for the rest of their time as a Columbia alumnus or alumna um, to review resumes, to uh, peruse the more than 75,000 internship and employment opportunities available exclusively to the Columbia community through the program called Lion Share, to have on-campus job fairs, um, and even in this time where time on campus, apologies, uh, where time on campus is not physical. Um, they have continued to expand their virtual offerings. Our um, Columbia Center for Career Education is offering virtual, how to get a virtual job, how to ace a virtual interview, workshops available throughout the summer and throughout the academic year. So they're incredibly responsive and are making sure that students are prepared to enter the workforce after college, no matter what that workforce will look like four years into the future. Um, but New York acts as an extension, not just of the professional and educational um, offerings that we have for our students, uh, but is also a great way to continue to expand our community. Students have free access to more than 30 museums throughout the five boroughs. Um, it's an extension of our classroom, our campus, our laboratories. Um, so we could not offer what it means to be a Columbia student without acknowledging how much comes from the unique location of New York City. But we do certainly still have a campus. Um, our campus, as I mentioned, is a physical residential campus. We have more than 500 clubs and organizations, so students that are looking to connect with uh, students with similar professional goals, whether that's our pre-medical or pre-law or pre-business associations um, who want to connect with peers with similar identities, with dozens of identity-based uh, organizations. Um, some of you might also be interested in music and the arts alongside your STEM. So orchestras and acapella groups. Um, we do have 31 Division I varsity athletic teams, as well as more than 40 competitive club sports uh, and intramurals for any level of engagement, if that's the type of community you're hoping to tap into. Um, and as I mentioned, New York acts as an extension of all of that. So while students certainly spend the majority of their time on campus connecting with peers, and there's never a night on campus where there isn't something going on hosted by one of our student groups, um, we also offer discounted and free tickets to Broadway shows, um, movies, um, cultural events, Yankees games, if you're into that sort of thing. I'm from Ohio, so maybe not so much, but we wanna make sure that students can explore um, New York, not just for jobs, not just for class, um, but for fun as well, and to make sure that that's an affordable experience for them. I do want to, before we talk about affordability and before we move into the Q&A, so I've already started to get some great questions from my colleagues, so please do continue to pose questions you might have in the chat. Um, but I do want to talk about how, how we identify the students that are the best fit for this residential community with this intellectually engaging core um, where students are connecting with faculty and peers. We want to make sure that students can um, really get a window into how we make those decisions. Um, I do want to acknowledge that these are unprecedented times uh, to do admissions and, and to graduate from high school. And so 
what has always been our philosophy has been to consider students as whole people. We look at all of the pieces of an application to try and better understand who students are as people and how that fits into our community. Um, there are no specific numbers or uh, minimums or cutoffs that say whether or not a student is prepared for or is not prepared for the rigors of Columbia. Um, we genuinely look at how students are challenging themselves within the context of what's available to them, how they're succeeding relative to their peers. Um, but more importantly, who are they? What are they interested in? What makes them tick? What are the experiences that they'd be bringing into our core classrooms, into our uh, clubs and organizations? What are the questions they'll be posing? Um, what sources of information are they looking at? We have a supplement to our application that asks questions about books that students read or publications or websites that they've perused because we want to get to know who students are in their communities and as intellectuals to better understand how they would fit in with our campus. And I'm sure students are going to pose lots of questions about that. And I'm, that's why I'm going to save the second half of our time for your questions. But I just wanted to emphasize the humanity that's behind this. My colleagues that are answering your questions and myself are people that actually read those essays, your letters of recommendation, how you've come to your particular interests. I should note that if you are interested in applying to Columbia, you are applying to either Columbia College or Columbia Engineering. So you do have to make a decision about if you want to be an engineer or anything else. Um, we do have students that, uh, a handful of students every year that might change their mind after their first year. But um, beyond that, we just wanna get to know how you've built your interests and understand that you might change your mind, um, but wanna get to know you as people in this challenging context and otherwise. The last piece I want to leave us with, and I do encourage folks to ask questions about admissions, the academic experience, the student experience, support. Um, it looks like we're still getting lots of great questions, so keep them coming. Um, but I did want to go back to a point I mentioned early on, which is our dedication to affordability. This is not just, um, it's still important, but is not only the fact that we meet 100% of demonstrated need for all students, regardless of citizenship status. Um, we cut, which means that we cover 100% of the difference between what your family can afford and our total cost of attendance, including tuition, housing, food, um, books, your travel to and from campus when campus is in person fully. Um, that's a really important part of access that we think is key because the students that are the best fit um, for Columbia identified through that admissions process, we want to make sure that cost of attendance is never a barrier. Um, but we're also thinking about affordability beyond that really generous support that was more uh, almost $175 million in aid last year. Um, but we're also thinking about how to make sure that everyone can make the most of their Columbia experience. So some great examples are on the slide, um, but I want to call attention to things like free laundry on campus. Um, that that we do have housing for all four years which makes living in new york a much more affordable prospect um, all of the discounts that i've mentioned to make sure that students are exploring the best of new york city in the ways that interest them most um, so we are thinking about that and dedicating lots of resources to supporting students um, so that they can fully experience the best of a columbia education now it looks like we've gotten lots of great questions and we have almost 20 minutes, which is perfect. Um, as I'm answering questions, I do want to encourage you. This was a very broad overview. We offer information sessions daily. Um, we also have specific sessions for students who want to learn more about Columbia engineering specifically. Um, our social media is broad and robust. So there are lots of ways to continue to get to know Columbia if I'm not able to answer your question. Um, we also answered a question in the Q&A publicly that shares the email address that you can direct your questions to if there's something I don't get a chance to ask in the next several minutes. So I apologize. Um, we, I'm pulling up the questions that you've asked. So when I look down, that's what I'm looking for. Um, 
So since we were talking about financial aid, I want to start with a question about um, need-based scholarships versus merit scholarships that looks like has come up. So thank you very much for that. Um, in my conversation about affordability, um, it, I think the slide mentioned that we are need-based only, but when we are thinking about access, we do dedicate all of our resources to need-based aid. So we actually don't offer merit scholarships, academic, athletic, or otherwise. What we do is dedicate all of those resources towards covering 100% of the difference um, between what families can afford and what we cost for any student that would benefit from that support, right? So no merit scholarships, all need. Another great thing, some of you, uh, a plug I want to make, um, I'm seeing some questions about our Columbia engineering experience, another great way to continue to get to know Columbia. Um, we are having the Columbia engineering experience virtually, which is our program for students who are in the fall of their senior year. Uh, it's a way, it's directed specifically towards students that are underrepresented in engineering to learn more about Columbia and we think about being underrepresented in lots of ways. Um, so if you want to learn more about Columbia, I can encourage you to do to go to the Columbia engineering experience website um, applications are live now and are due at the end of the month. So it might be a great way to continue to learn more. It seems like a lot of you might be interested in pre-medicine. Um, so I wanna to talk to you about what those opportunities look like. I mentioned academic advising, um, but we also have robust supports for navigating the pre-professional space more broadly. Um, so we have something called our Office of Pre-Professional Advising that works specifically with our pre-law, pre-business, and pre-medicine um, uh, students. These are dedicated advisors alongside your academic advisors who work with you from the time you might be starting to think about going into medicine through actually applying to medical school, regardless of whether or not that happens after you've graduated from Columbia. There is no pre-med major at Columbia. We encourage students to take an academic program that excites them, um, that relates to their interests, because for us, we know that there are specific classes that prepare students to go into medical school that you could take as electives or as part of majors like chemistry or biomedical engineering or neuroscience, but that you might have other interests you want to explore alongside that, which is where these pre-professional advisors come in. They can help you navigate when to take the requirements for uh, medical schools, which are biology, chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, and calculus. Um, when to take that, how to start research, um, navigating shadowing at the hospital St. Luke's across the street or up at Columbia Medical Center. Um, and they put together some of the most robust medical school applications in the world. And in fact, our students' acceptance rate to top tier medical programs last year was 93%, which is about twice the national average. Um, so not only are they advising students throughout, but are that's translating to success in the medical school application process. A great question that was posed shifting gears back towards the core. Um, with, is what, why should an engineer want to take a humanities based core? I think this is spectacular and connects to why you might be interested in liberal arts engine, uh, liberal arts schools as an engineer, because what the core does is focuses on developing school uh, skills in written and oral communication, gives students a broader education that focuses on cultural context as well as technical proficiency. Um, and that goes back to the philosophy of engineering for humanity. We do think that engineering can solve the world's problems, but building skills in teamwork, in communication, in understanding other cultures gives students the soft skills they need to accomplish that alongside the, the math and science technical base that they're certainly going to get at Columbia Engineering and other great engineering schools. Um, but we think that that poses um, a really important question. For us, we think that distinguishes technically proficient engineers from people who will become leaders in the field that can make these connections, can build collaboration, and can think critically and creatively as they approach solving these problems. 
And we think that the core is an especially great way to do that, um, to approach that liberal arts because of the tradition and the community that it creates amongst students. Now, it looks like um, a lot of you want to get a little bit more information about research and internships. Um, so I, I've scattered a little bit of information about that throughout, but I want to just emphasize that for those of you that are seeking that professional development, um, that want to do research or explore internships, that can start as early as your first year and extend throughout your four years. Um, when we're thinking about research, your academic advisors and faculty advisors are a great way to explore. Um, most students will find research on campus through informal processes of emailing a professor and indicating that you're interested in research and ask or their research specifically and ask them to um, have a meeting and faculty are responsive and want to talk to undergraduates about their work and that often translates into a position in a research group. There's also um, research fairs on campus where basically faculty are looking for undergraduates to fill positions in their labs um, and so that's a great way to find out who's looking and we also have more formal research fellowships over summers like our summer undergraduate research fellowship for students interested in um, biology biomedical engineering and chemistry um, so that's a great way for students to have a more formal approach to research where they spend eight to ten weeks on campus have their housing covered and have one-on-one -on -one faculty mentorship that ends with poster presentation. So we have the full spectrum of ways for students to access research from um, the first example I offered through those more structured research internships or sorry, re, yeah, research fellowships. And similarly with internships, the Center for Career Education is a great resource that um, posts and collects uh, internships and employment opportunities exclusively for Columbia students to explore. Um, but then, as I mentioned, supports students not only in finding those positions, but making sure they're the most competitive for them. Um, that's why more than half of our Columbia computer scientists are able to go on to great technical programs, especially at Google, um, are being hired by think tanks, are being are moving on into um, finance, are moving into um, green technology, or are moving into the arts. So publishing houses um, ac across the world, right? Because they're guiding students through writing terrific resumes, nailing interviews, and even have a closet of professional attire donated by Macy's if students don't have access to um, the professional attire they need to feel confident in those settings. So taking a holistic approach to guiding students through that success and more than 95% of Columbia students will have at least one internship uh, during their time at Columbia and in fact the average is four because this is something students can do not just uh, exclusively over the summer but throughout the academic year alongside their classes because we have the unique benefit of being in New York and being able to take a train downtown to your internship or research um, facility and then come back up in time for class and dinner in our dining halls. Okay, next question. Um, keep them coming and our team is doing their best to respond to as many as they can and and i'll say that we probably won't be able to answer all of your questions because you have so many great questions but again we'll keep on doing our best for the next 10 minutes so thank you for posing such wonderful questions um, a lot of you have some multiple interests. You might be interested in taking some, uh, exploring classes in engineering and in Columbia College. So many of you are asking about the possibilities of double majoring or uh, exploring across different programs. Generally speaking, um, double majoring as an engineer is not something our students do. If you are in our engineering school, you have the opportunity to take any one of our 10 department offerings um, in engineering and the full list is on the website sorry 10 departments 22 different engineering majors um, but students also have the opportunity alongside the humanities of the core which gives them a rounded experience to spend the rest of their elective time taking 
minors either in engineering departments or more than 20 non-technical departments like languages, economics, music, so students can supplement and round their education as engineering students in that way, or through unstructured electives where students have access to any of the classes in Columbia College, but not up to that full major. On the other side, um, students in Columbia College have a little bit more flexibility to take up to two majors. Um, that's not the most common because we do have the core curriculum, which is about a third of a student's time. A major goes uh, to is about a third of students graduation requirements. So you can technically accommodate the a second major with that third um, third as students in Columbia College, but only about 10% of students will do that. It's much more common to um, explore other interests through the structure of the core to pick a major and then to take um, a minor in other departments. Uh, it's not always in engineering. It's rarely in engineering. Students that want two full majors in Columbia College and in Columbia, Columbia Engineering, that's actually a five-year program that students apply to in their junior year. So there's lots of flexibility. We do want students to explore both with the core and beyond, and there's plenty of space to do it, but double majoring is a little bit less common at Columbia. Now, Oh, these are great. Um, someone has posed a question about Barnard College, so I want to address that while we're here. Um, Barnard College is one of our affiliated undergraduate institutions. Um, it's an all women's college whose campus is immediately across the street from our campus. Note that any of the young women in the room who are interested in engineering who might be considering an all women's college, um, you should know that engineering departments are exclusively in Columbia Engineering. Barnard College is another school of arts and sciences that has many of the departments um, that Columbia College has. Uh, it is connected to our community where students eat in the dining halls across campuses. Um, there's cross registration across many of our courses. Um, many of our student groups have women from Barnard College as well as students in Columbia College and Columbia Engineering. However, a key difference is going to be um, the application process. Barnard College has its own application process. Its approach to the liberal arts is different. Um, so while Columbia College students, since we're thinking about those as comparable offerings, uh, while Columbia College students have the structure of the core curriculum, Barnard College takes a um, more distribution requirement approach through what's called foundation. So it's a lot more flexible. There are different categories of courses. Um, and of course, being in a smaller all women's college has um, different advising structures and philosophy, different housing. Um, and so while there is lots of connections between students of Barnard College and Columbia College and Columbia Engineering, they are also distinct experiences um, that may fit your needs in one way or another. Now we're getting some great questions about campus. Um, so I want to address those. Um, some of you have asked questions about campus safety. So I want to start there and then talk a little bit more about the community. Um, I want to reassure you that New York City is one of the safest cities in the world and Columbia in its location in Morningside Heights is the third safest precinct in New York um, after the United Nations and Central Park. So the safest inhabited precinct in New York. Truly, I say this to emphasize that all of the precautions that I mention in the next 30 seconds are precautions, right? New York is incredibly safe for those of you that might not have had a chance to visit or, or might not be familiar with the area. With that being said, we are in a city. We do put lots of emphasis on making sure that student safety is at the center. So physical safety, we think about um, swipe access to our residence hall halls only for Columbia students. Um, we do have our campus public safety um, who are members of our community that support student safety on campus and um, patrol the neighborhood and respond to incidents that might arise. So we do have our own um, campus public safety organization and the community is invested in our safety as Columbia as the community is Columbia. So things like our Red Lion um, safe haven program. So businesses in the immediate surround area surrounding campus um, have a logo in their window. So if students are experiencing any 
issues or feel unsafe, they can go into any one of these buildings and public safety will be called and they can come help you in whatever that help requires. Um, when we're also thinking about medical safety, we do have St. Luke's Roosevelt Hospital across the street, as well as a Columbia community specific ambulance service, which is also great for my pre-med friends. We do have many students that are um, certified EMTs that are supporting the health of the Columbia community. And then I'll also mention um, mental health and wellness. Um, so I, I already mentioned our counseling and psychological services that has um, opportunities to schedule sessions and um, walk-in hours for students that might benefit from um, talking and additional support. Um, but we also have crisis night lines um, for students who might want to call and, and talk to trained students um, through challenges they may be experiencing to whatever level or degree of severity. So student safety also taking a holistic approach. Um, I want to, looks like we have a question about traditions. Um, we're coming up on it, so we have a couple more uh, questions I'll be able to answer. Um, some great Columbia traditions, you know what, I'll save traditions for the end, because we have a couple admissions questions. Um, getting lots of questions about essays, how to stand out, um, and also testing. So I want to emphasize again the holistic nature of our approach um, to say that really what stands out in an application is telling a coherent story. So essays should be a way to share what interests you, what excites you, um, experiences that have shaped you. They should be well edited versions of your voice, but we should still be able to hear your voice and get a sense of how it connects to the other information that we're seeing in an application. Um, we're getting some questions about standardized testing, so I do want to address that. Um, so much of your lives and what you have access to has changed in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and our admissions office is certainly uh, responsive to that. Um, that includes being test optional for the 2020-2021 application year. Truly test optional. We understand that students' access to tests have changed. We in no way want students to risk um, their health and safety to take a standardized test. If you have a standardized test already and you think that it represents your academic ability, talk to your school counselors. You can share that and self-report that on the application, but you should not be putting yourself at risk to try and take a standardized test. We are genuinely test optional. Um, along that same vein, um, we are aware that your extracurriculars might be impacted, leadership positions, if that's something that fits your personality, um, internships, summer experiences were drastically interrupted. We're taking all of that into context when we're thinking about the impact of the pandemic. But we also think about context more broadly. Um, we're thinking about how schools are different, how they offer different programs, different rigor, how they challenge students differently. Um, and so we not only consider what students have had access to in this global context of the pandemic, um, but also locally, what's available in your neighborhood? How are you challenging yourself? Um, what courses are, are available to you? What extracurriculars are available to you? Because we're considering who you are and what you've accomplished um, within that contextual lens, which is very important to us. Um, Another note about testing, we don't require subject tests. Uh, we haven't for several years and that continues to be the case. Um, so if you have taken them, you're again, you're welcome to submit them. Um, but by no means should you be taking them for Columbia. We genuinely don't require them. The last question I want to answer since we're almost at time are I'll leave you with some of my favorite Columbia traditions that I think um, demonstrate what makes the Columbia community so close. Um, so starting from the beginning, though it'll look a little bit different this year, um, the orientation that acclimates students to campus called our new student orientation program um, is an incredible set of resources that help students learn how to navigate campus, living in New York, riding the subway um, before their first classes even begin. Um, and is a great way to help all first year students connect with one another um, or entering students for our transfers. Um, but then we go to uh, traditions like homecoming, which is uh, usually in October. It coincides with parents weekend. It's a um, tons of tents and tailgating for uh, to celebrate our football team. Um, 
regardless of the outcome. Uh, our tree lighting ceremony that is featured in this wonderful picture uh, is one of my favorites. The first Thursday of December, the trees that line College Walk are ceremoniously lit with holiday lights while acapella groups perform and deans give speeches, um, where students really come together and appreciate what it means to be a member of the Columbia community. Um, and then we continue with so many other opportunities to engage, um, but some others are our spring concert series, Bacchanal, and of course, commencement, that's the capstone of every academic year, where more than 30,000 friends and family celebrate the graduation of our students across the university as well as for our undergraduates. Um, so it truly is a sight to behold if you ever Google it, um, but is a great way to put a cherry on the end of every academic year um, in Columbia's campus in New York City. So with that, it looks like our time is done. Um, I do want to thank you all for uh, spending your time with us today. Please do ask uh, additional questions by email, ugradask, ugrad-ask at columbia.edu, which is included in the chat. Um, thanks to my colleagues. Thanks to StriveScan. And we hope you enjoy the rest of your day wherever you are. Great. Thank you so much, Samantha, for sharing this information. And students and counselors, thank you for tuning in and for your active involvement with the questions. Uh, a reminder, as you close this box, a quick four question survey will appear. We do ask for your feedback on today's session. We encourage you to sign up for additional sessions at strivescan.com slash virtual slash STEM. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.